everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today we're going to be building this big modern split top dining table on Modern Builds. I'm starting by running four 8 foot 2 by 12s through the planer. This is going to remove the rounded corners that most construction lumber has. The tabletop is made out of two pieces, each piece being two 2 by 12s And I'm using a half inch doweling jig to help reinforce that glue line. It's also going to help everything line up a lot easier when it's time to glue everything up. Whenever I'm gluing up panels, I like to use aluminum bar clamps. They're cheap, easy to use, and help keep everything pretty flat. Another thing to help make sure you've got a flat tabletop is to use call boards like what I'm doing here on the sides. They're just scrap 2x4s wrapped in packing tape so that wood glue can't stick to them. They put pressure on the ends of the boards and help keep them from cupping. Once I used the belt sander to clean up my glue lines and make sure everything was flat, I trimmed each end. Right now it's 8 feet long and I cut it down so that it was 7 and a half feet long total. Then I sanded the tabletop to 220 grit. Oh, and don't forget, you need two pieces for the tabletop. After I ran my 2x12s through the thickness planer, I also ran all of the 2x4 pieces for the base. I wanted all the pieces to be the same thickness and to remove that rounded edge from the 2x4s as well. To make the frame for the legs, I cut four pieces to 28 inches long and four more to 35 and three quarters of an inch long. I used my circular saw along with a 12 inch speed square as my straight edge. To make the corners of the frame a little bit stronger and look a little bit better, I'm using rabbit joints. Now you can do this a lot of ways. One way is with a circular saw. Just make sure your saw blade is set to the correct depth and then you can take multiple passes to remove all that material. It helps to use a scrap piece of wood in front of where you're cutting so that the bed of your circular saw has plenty of wood to set flat on. Now you're not going to be left with a perfectly clean joint, you're going to need to use a chisel to clean all of that out, but it's not very much work. A lot quicker and a lot more repeatable way of doing this though is with a table saw and a miter gauge. However you choose to cut your joints, make sure once you have all your pieces done that everything lines up, your joints are clean and that the corners are square, then you can spread out your glue and clamp everything up. I'm using a ratcheting band clamp for the first time and I was surprised at how easy it is to clamp up a square frame like this. After the glue set, I came back from the top and bottom to reinforce those joints with some 5 16 inch dowels. I just marked the locations for them, made sure and drilled a perfectly straight hole down through the legs, then glued in some dowels, making sure to clamp my frame together. That way, it couldn't separate while I was knocking the dowels in. After about 30 minutes or so, I got my Japanese pulse saw and trimmed them flush, then sanded everything nice and clean. The risers for the legs are cut out of 1x4s, which are actually 3 quarters of an inch thick. After I had them cut to length, I moved over to the bandsaw, drew out a radius on each end, and cut it out. I used a scrap piece of wood to help make sure I was holding my piece of wood square to the blade. Then, after I had it roughed out, I moved over to the oscillating spindle sander to smooth that corner out. My bandsaw cut was pretty rough, but once I had it sanded clean, it looked really cool. Then I basically spread some glue out onto the top of my leg, made sure everything was centered, then clamped down that riser piece. Once it was all dry, I came back with the sander one more time and cleaned everything up. And while I did that, I made sure that everything else was sanded really smooth, up to 220 grit too. I'm cutting four 2x4 two stretchers for the tops of the legs. Now I'm going to be attaching these to the legs with pocket hole screws. This is a pretty fancy pocket hole jig and I'll leave links to it down in the description as well as a cheaper version that'll work just as fine. Pocket holes are a quick and easy way of attaching things from the underside so that no one will ever see the screws, but it'll still be a strong joint. Oh hi, I was just working on my Squarespace website. Did you know the entire Modern Builds website was built using Squarespace? Well, it is. I built my website about two years ago, long before Squarespace was paying me to promote the product, and I love it. Building a website is literally as easy as you can imagine. If you can drag and drop files, do a little bit of typing, you can make a Squarespace website. The built-in designer templates look great off the shelf, but it's also really easy to customize it to make a really unique, one-of-a-kind website, too. If you're interested in starting a Squarespace website of your own, make sure and follow the link down in the description, and use the code MODERNBUILDS to get 10% off your first purchase. Thanks, Squarespace.
I used an eighth inch drill bit to drill a bunch of pilot holes so that later on I can drill up through those stretchers and the legs and into the tabletop. I cut an eighth inch spacer out of another two x four that I could use so that I could clamp my tabletop pieces together and make sure that everything was square and straight. Then I drilled up through the spacers and into the tabletop. Overall, I think I put about 40, 45 screws through the bottom of this thing. It should be held on pretty strong. I also went ahead and added two more stretchers to the bottoms of the legs. This was not part of the initial plan, but it had a little bit of side to side wobble still. Once I added these stretchers though, it was sturdy. Whenever you're staining a soft wood like pine, you want to make sure and use a wood conditioner so that the stain goes on evenly and you don't get a blotchy finish. Like I said, I'll have links to everything I used down in the description, including links to this stain, which is Early American by Minwax. This was the first time I've used it, but I'm a big fan. You'll definitely see me using this again in the future. And after a couple coats of polycrylic, the table was done. Now this table sits six easily, but could fit eight with one on each end. I think it would look really cool if you made a set of matching benches using the same techniques, just sizing everything proportionally. So that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was really fun getting a big project out of the way. It's been a while since I've done a larger furniture piece and I'm glad to get another one out there. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. That just lets YouTube know that this was a good video and that they should suggest it to other people. If you're new to my channel, I'd welcome you to check out a couple of my other videos as well as subscribe right here. That way you can stay updated every time I post a new project video. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you next week with another project on Modern Builds.